Today we're going to look at uh, something that confuses a lot of people. It's the offset distance or the kerf width. And the semi-confusing statement that PlasmaCam makes in their software uh, when they say that uh, it's twice, twice the uh, offset distance. In this example in my settings, in the offset convert tab, you'll notice that my cutter kerf width is set to 0 0.08 or 80 thousandths of an inch. It would normally be 0 0.080, but it doesn't put the other zero there. So the cutter kerf width is set to 80 thousandths of an inch. Of course, the Pierce lead-in is uh, 150 thousandths uh, or 0.15 and etc. And in, in this example, there's a gap at the end of the loop of 0 0.01 or 10 thousandths of an inch. And people are confused by the statement that says cutter kerf width twice offset distance in inch. Okay, cutter kerf width parentheses twice offset distance in inch. I've got it set to 80 thousandths. I'm going to show you what that means. If I take this design here, and I convert it to a cut path. I'm going to say N, convert to cut path. And I'll just click on the outside here and create my cut path. Now right click to break out of the tool. Now you'll notice when I deselect it, I have my blue cut path with the lead in and I have my closed path. I'm gonna zoom into this area here because that's what concerns us at the moment. In my design tab, I'm going to set the text height to 0 0.05 inches because that's all I'm going to need to see it. 0 0.05 inches or 50 thousandths of an inch and say OK. Now you'll notice when I measure the distance from the node here to the end of the lead in, the length is 0.15 as I put in my settings or 150 thousandths of an inch. You'll notice that the gap at the end of the loop from the node to the end point of this line is 10 thousandths, <clears throat> which is what I put in my settings for gap at end of loop. That's right here. Normally this would be set to zero, but I set it at 10 so you can see what it's referring to. However, I have set my, my torch kerf width, the actual groove, if you take the torch and you cut a straight line through the material and take a feeler gauge, slip it into the slot that it cut, how wide is that slot? Well, I'm saying that the slot is 80 thousandths of an inch. So if I say Q.08, it gives me this circle and I will just H put it on this path right there. Now this is your square over here that we're cutting. To make it clearer, I'm going to show solid closed paths. We're trying to cut this square out of this material. So by setting the kerf width at 0.08, the number that that's referring to from the quadrant to the quadrant is 0 0.08 inches. You see that? Point zero 0.08 is the width of the actual flame that's going to cut through the material. And since the torch follows the cut path, the offset distance will be 0 0.04. This is what they're referring to. When it says cutter kerf width is the number that you enter, it says how wide of a groove is it going to cut through the material? Your torch, it might be 0 0.06, it might be 0 0.072, it might be 0 0.054 for fine 
cut cut uh, consumables. <clears throat> You might have different torches instead of the hypertherm. You might have a, a cut master or one of the others. So this kerf width, in order to set this number correctly, you need to cut a groove through your material and then measure it with a feeler gauge. Exactly how wide is that groove? And then that's the number that you put in to your settings up here at your cutter kerf width. That's how wide the groove is that you're cutting. And when it says twice offset distance in inches, what they're talking about is here's your closed path. This is the square you want to cut out. And this is the clo this is the cut path that it's going to lay down. The offset distance of this cut path is 40 thousandths of an inch. Therefore, the kerf will be 80. Or to make it more clear, your torch kerf would be 80 thousandths of an inch, and therefore your cut path will be drawn 40 thousandths of an inch off, so that the edge of this flame that's cutting through your material will cut right along the edge that you intended to cut. And you'll end up with a square that exactly exactly one by one inch. Now let's look at this if I were to change these settings. If I were to say cut our kerf width 0.06 and say OK. It's still going to, well, let's see, let me, uh, let me draw another square. I'll take this, copy it over so we can compare them. There we go. And I will say N, convert to cut path, and click right there. Now you'll notice that the distance, uh, let's see, control D, I'll just say H to perpendicular, H to P, and that gives me 0 0.030, which is half of the 0 0.06 that I told the software the torch was cutting. But the torch is actually cutting 0 0.08. So if I copy this from the center here, and I put it on the path there. What you see is that torch, by changing, by changing this setting, you're only changing the setting of how far this cut path is offset from the edge of your material. Here's my material here for this square. I set the kerf width to 0 0.06. So it set the cut path at 0.03. The only problem is changing the kerf width does not change the diameter of the flame that's cutting through the material. So the material ends up cutting into the shape you wanted to cut. And what it's going to do in this particular instance is your torch is going to cut 10 thousandths of an inch into the edge of your one inch square. And therefore, the square will end up being 20 thousandths of an inch, 10 on this side and 10 on the other side. It will end up being 20 thousandths of an inch smaller than one inch dimension from this edge of the square to this edge of the square. Because your torch is cutting in 10 thousandths of an inch into the material right here. Page, sorry, offset point oh 0.01, enter. You see now that the torch is cutting along the edge of this. That's what it's going to give me when it drops out. But this is what I wanted. So that square is going to end up being 20 thousandths of an inch smaller than it should be because I entered the wrong kerf width 
in the software. The software cannot change the diameter of the torch. So you have to tell it how wide the torch is cutting through your material here. Point oh eight. By putting this measurement here, which is how wide of a groove does it cut through your material, it will create the cut path one half the distance, 0.04, it'll put the cut path here, and your 80 thousandths of an inch torch will cut right along the edge of the closed path where you wanted it to cut. If you enter the wrong number, 0.06, it's going to set the cut path at 0.03 away from your actual square that you want and the torch is going to follow that path right here. The only problem is <clears throat> you can't change the diameter of the flame and therefore the side of the flame is going to cut ten thousandths of an inch into material that you wanted to keep. You wanted it to cut here, but instead it's cutting here. I do free online instruction via Zoom, linking our computers together over the internet. If you're interested in that, send me your name, address, and phone number. Tell me about your table and your software and any software upgrades you have. Send it to me at adminow at mail.com. And be sure to send it to mail.com, not gmail. Send the information to me and I'll be happy to get back with you and do some free online training with you over the internet. I also do on-site training. I will come out to your home or office anywhere in the 48 United States and do one-on-one -on -one training with you. My fee is currently $700 per day for that. It's per training day. That includes my travel time to and from your location. It covers my hotel, my food, um, uh, the fuel, the wear and tear on the truck, and the maintenance of my home during my absence. So <clears throat> I can come out and train you. I am currently setting up three brand new 17-inch laptops for remote training. So it's going to be a crisp and clean uh, situation to set up a, a training situation. I can train you and your wife or you and your son or you and your grandson or granddaughter, uh, etc., uh, I can train up to three people at a time uh, with my current setup. And if you have more people than that, I have other computers I can drag out if necessary. But uh, I tried to condense all of my towers and monitors and all that other stuff into a series of four laptops to make it much easier and more compact to travel around and drag in, in and out of hotel rooms, etc. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope this has explained the importance of measuring the kerf width, which is the width of the actual cut your torch makes through the material, and then putting that setting in the settings so that the cut path can be set at the proper distance so that the edge of the torch can cut right along the edge of what you intended to leave behind instead of losing 10 or 15 or 20 thousandths of an inch of that material because your kerf width is improperly set.